A few years ago, you conducted a study on solarizing the HDB rooftops mm -hmm. in Singapore. Briefly tell us about the study and when it was conducted. Okay, I think we have launched this study in 2002 mm -hmm. with support of the German industry. This was a company called Thyssen Group was involved. And this study was looking into the potential of photovoltaics, building integrated photovoltaics for public housing in Singapore. So basically, uh, the objective was to estimate how much of the energy demand of building types, that specific public housing building types, uh, can be actually offset by photovoltaic energy if it were supplied or integrated in the facade and roof of the building. I see. Okay, so what were the results of this study? After some years of studies where basically we um, developed architectural design proposals, hypothetical design proposals on where photovoltaics could be installed, on the roof, facade, shading and so on, even as windows, uh, we concluded by computation simulation that in the order of between 20 and 50 percent of actually the energy that is uh, required during the day, meaning from 7 to 7, um, can be offset with photovoltaic energy. Are you working on a project now to implement solar energy on HDP flats or and other commercial buildings? Actually, uh, not specifically with HDB or residential projects in general, but more so with the Building Construction Authority. They have a project what they call Zero Energy Building, uh, which is a retrofit of an office building. Mm -hmm. And the retrofit is supposed to uh, reduce the energy consumption of that building um, dramatically uh, by over 60% to a level that can be actually produced by photovoltaics installed on the roof and the facade. So we are talking about an energy consumption of around 80, 88 or up to 90 kilowatt hours per meter square per year. And um, our massive installation of photovoltaics on the roof and various parts of the facades can actually um, generate exactly the same amount. Um, but it's not that the building will be taken off the grid it is a so-called net zero energy building, which means that um, mm -hmm. over a course of a year, we compare the energy consumption with the energy production. Mm -hmm. And if that is perfectly balanced out, we talk of a, we speak of this net zero energy building. Mm -hmm. So it's not taking off. There will be times, uh, especially during night or when mm -hmm. the weather is very bad, where the demand is much higher than actually the production. Uh, but conversely, there will be times during the peak when it's very clear um, uh, sunny conditions where the building produces much more than it actually consumes, but over a year it should actually level out so as to you know, really establish this zero energy building concept. So what are the current uh, research projects are you working on right now? Actually, I think um, in terms of projects, uh, there are a lot of consultancy projects where potential implementers um, are approaching us. Uh, so me and my team, so as to inform them, oh, okay, can you retrofit our building um, or non-building structure even with uh, photovoltaics or uh, considering the principles of solar architectural design, harnessing daylight on a larger perspective. Um, so they are approaching us to actually calculate what their energy consumption would, uh, production would be mm -hmm. through this additional uh, photovoltaics and uh, help them in tendering it out if they are interested in converting that hypothetical study into an implementation, really building it, then we are helping them to specify the tender so that the system integrators can actually deliver exactly what we or the client want. Um, sometimes it remains as a theoretical study where we just do feasibility studies. Sometimes it uh, basically evolves into a full-fledged project. And uh, but most importantly, we do a lot of those things already in our education in, in National University Department of Architecture. Mm -hmm. So we, we train architecture students that uh, that uh, they learn about the solar architecture principles, and that they um, are also. Uh, understanding that they as architects are the negotiator of many stakeholders that are behind sustainable architecture projects, which means um, um, it's not just the architect that designs, but he needs to work with climate engineers, he needs to work with mechanical engineers, with all stakeholders involved, and that is what we call the um, integrated design process. So all those projects, including the zero energy building that I mentioned, and all the successful award-winning buildings that are um, won awards because of architectural design and low energy uh, or even zero energy, 
they run through this, uh, what we call integrated design process, where all the stakeholders come together at a very early stage so that concepts actually negotiated and discussed and settled in a very early design stage. Because what happened in the past was basically that the building got built mm -hmm. and then a photovoltaic was an after construction addition to the building, which is uh, much costlier than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So including all those and considering all those design drivers in the early stage in this integrated design process uh, is very important so that this topic itself is a project on its own to actually create awareness for the necessity of integrated project to research and teaching. So besides consultancy, besides um, other projects, um, um, uh, we are working on planning software as well because what we think is that uh, architects and those stakeholders need to have some handy tools to give them some kind of ballpark figure. Uh, does it make sense? How high can we go? How much would it cost? Mm -hmm. So usually this kind of uh, software that does, um, um, I would say, semi-professional accuracy is not around. So we're trying to develop this so as to help in the planning process. So there are various things like uh, uh, actual buildings, like zero energy buildings, research projects, teaching, consultancy. And uh, since uh, this uh, area of solar energy was actually launched, I think, Almost two years ago, we have uh, a lot of actually potential implementers that actually ask us what, what can we do together. Okay. Uh, <coughs> can you just tell us what is BIPV and how it works? Mm -hmm. Yes. So BIPV is actually the short form for building integrated photovoltaics. And the idea is that um, photovoltaics uh, is not a post-construction addition to a finished building but that the PV skin is already a, f a full fledged member of the building envelope. So that walls, windows, roof systems actually come already with photovoltaics, uh, basically as a painting uh, or as a coating, uh, prefabricated. So we are trying to uh, promote that facade or roof manufacturers need to consider that BIPV technology as part of their building components. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, um, um, it's an integration to various aspects of the building, um, uh, especially the, the energy balance. So in terms of PV, uh, there's an aesthetic component to this as well. So it's not just the feasibility of having prefabricated building envelope elements that have PV skins already, but it needs to look nice as well. It needs to be convincing. The design component is very important because that is, I think in Singapore, there could be the niche uh, because what we have seen so far is mostly, an, um, as I said, the post-construction addition of mm -hmm. this technology, and therefore often the design is compromised. But if you consider that in, in this integrated design process, they are actually, um, uh, this technology does not compromise on the design, but rather it gives opportunities, so it can evolve as a design language that we as, we as architect need to be aware of and actually you know, harness leverage from. So um, building integrated photovoltaics also deals with the electric uh, kind of balance, energy balance matching. You have a certain demand of energy in the building that peaks during the noon time because the building gets hotter. Uh, so you have a certain pattern of consumption. And through photovoltaic integration of various selected parts of the building, we're trying to follow that pattern. So there's a peak in, in around noon time, and we're trying to shave that peak with insulation on the, on the, on the roof. And for in cases where we have a slight shift of the peak towards the morning, then we try to have the photovoltaics maybe on the eastern part of the building, integrate into the facade. And, and similarly, if the peak happens to be at the afternoon, then we place it where the afternoon sun would actually be. So there, there are aesthetic, mechanical, electrical components, energy building components that all basically are components under this uh, building integrated photovoltaic domain.